Welcome Clarity Coders and guests. In today's video, we're gonna talk about Wordle. If you haven't heard, which you probably have since you clicked on this thumbnail, Wordle is a game that's taking over where you guess a word that has five letters. You get six tries to get it. If you get gray letters, that means it's not contained in the word at all. Yellow means you have the right letter, but it's in the wrong position. And green means it's exactly correct in the right position. Now I've seen a couple posts on the best strategy to beat Wordle and different things like that. And it's all anecdotal. Today we're gonna to use Python to actually test the best strategies in Wordle and tell you definitively what the best strategy is and also how to test your own strategy on 100,000 plus games or whatever your little imagination desires. Let's not waste any more time and jump right in. So let's take a look at our first strategy. Now in this strategy, I think this is how a lot of us play. We're racking our little brains and we come up with a thousand five letter words to choose from. We make a guess based on that and we find out that there's a T and an O in the word we're looking for. Now we can't think of any other words with a T and an O in it, so we enlist the help of our friend and they come up with say a hundred words that have a T and an O in it and from there they can make another guess. Now in this case, they guessed hoist and they got the O and the T now in the correct spot. So with that in mind, we now only know 10 words that have an O in the second position and a T in the last. So we pick court. Now because we know there's an R in it, maybe now we're down to one single word that we can pick and we find out that that word is robot. Now this strategy seems to work great. Let's take a look at it in a Jupyter Notebook. So we're going to create a function here and we're going to get our first guess, which is a tone. Now we picked a tone because it has letters that are frequently used in other words. From here, this cell is going to be our knowledge bank, our brain of our algorithm. So we're gonna clear out the contains and we're gonna add in all the no letters. So what this means is it's going to tell our algorithm that our word cannot contain an A, T, O, N, or an E. And we have no perfect letters. Now we're gonna filter our words down. We had 10,000 five letter words originally. And after running this, we're down to 650. So let's make a guess here. So the guess it picked was Sheryl, which isn't a word, so I'm gonna jump around here. We'll cut out those words. The next valid word it picked was Gersh. Now you'll notice here that it gets the I and the R. So our word does contain these letters. So let's add that to our knowledge bank. So in our knowledge ba bank, we're gonna add in G, S, and H for letters that our word cannot have. And in the contains, we're gonna add in I and R because our word has to contain an I and an R. Now we can run our filter again. And you'll notice we're down to 53 words. So let's make another guess. Lurid. Lurid? Can I not read? You'll notice that it guessed an I and an R and it's still in the wrong spot. So we kind of wasted some information there, right? We're not any closer to knowing where those I and the R go, so maybe we shouldn't have guessed them at all. So let's add in the words, the letters that aren't in our word. Again, the L, the U, and the D. And we already know the I and the R. Now we're down to 19 words. It guesses crimp. Let's give that a try. Whoop and it appears it guessed it right. Now it was kind of lucky, right? It had 19 words left and it happened to guess crimp. So it's hard to judge this algorithm. And it's also pretty anecdotal that we just tried it on one instance and it got it right. What would happen if we played 100,000 games? We're gonna find out, but first let's look at our second strategy. So this strategy I came up with was getting as much knowledge as possible. So we're gonna have three rounds where we explore and guess 15 unique letters. For example, we guess a tone and it has a T and an O in it. Now ignoring that, we're going to guess five totally new letters and we pick Gersh. 
Now, ignoring the T, the O, and the R, we're going to pick five unique letters and pick clump. Now, why did we do this? Why did we pick five unique letters each time? Well, we're building up the knowledge of our algorithm itself. So now, when we go for our last three guesses, we have a huge bank of letters that we can't have in the word. And in this case, we have a small list of words that we must have in the word. And we're all basing this on our letter frequency. So let's take a look at this algorithm in the Jupyter Notebook. Now it's gonna guess the same first word because it's picking a popular, a word with popular letters. And in this case, all we found out from that word is the same as last time, right? That our word does not have an A, T, an O, an N, or an E. So for this next guess, our algorithm is going to work the exact same. It's going to pick five totally new letters. Again, it wants to use sure, which isn't a word, so let's skip to Gersh. So now's where our algorithm is going to work differently. Before, we guessed things that had an I and an R in it, and this time we're going to ignore things that have an I and an R in it and try to learn even more about our word. So I'm going to add into our known letters all the letters we've guessed so far, so it picks a word with none of those in it. Finally, it picks a valid word of clump. So now after we have this, now we have a knowledge bank consisting of 15 letters and information about them. And we're guaranteed every time we run this algorithm, after three turns, we're going to have information on 15 letters. Now in this case, we got some really good information, right? We know the exact position of C, the exact position of M and the exact position of P. And we also know it contains an I, it contains an R, and it doesn't have all the gray letters. So if I quickly fill out our knowledge bank here, and of course we're going to automate this when we test it on 100,000 games, you'll see that it guesses crimp right away. So what did we learn here? Both algorithms got the wordle right, but how do we know which is better? Well, we can lean on Python to dig in and see which algorithm would really perform better out in the wild. So what strategy should you use? Now I'll have this in the GitHub below so you can open it up yourself. But if we take a look at Visual Studio Code, what I did here is in Python, I programmed a Wordle game. So it picks from 10,000 words, it picks one five letter word, and then it goes through the game itself, tracking who wins and loses. From that, I created a strategy 1.py. Now this is the first strategy we talked about, how most of us play. I simulate the logic and I run 100,000 games with this strategy. Then, as you can guess, I coded strategy 2. This is the experimental phase, so we're exploring in the first three guesses. You could change that to be four guesses or whatever you wanted but we're learning as much information as possible before we start to guess. And, as you guessed, I tested this on 100,000 games as well. So, what were our results? What strategy should you use? And why is this maybe not relevant to how you should actually play the game? So, our results with strategy one were really great. We were winning like crazy, so to the tune of 77% of the time. Strategy two, however, with the explore factor built in, we were able to achieve a win rate of 80.4%. Now, while that doesn't seem like a big difference, a 3% increase is pretty big for a small strategy change. So how could we improve this? Well, that's the beauty of this GitHub repository that we created is we can try any strategy we want or any combination and actually test and see the results without it being anecdotal. Like I got the Wordle right the last six days in a row. It has to be a perfect strategy. We could build on this even farther. What if we use machine learning to decide when to explore and when to start guessing words? If you want to see that, leave me a shout out in the comment for that video and we'll start working on that next.
I hope you like this video. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, again, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you want to see. And until next time, keep coding.